Welcome, and thank you all for joining us on this online exhibition organized as part of the celebrations of the bicentennial of our independence. Today, we are very pleased to present the exhibition titled Emilio Diaz from Arequipa, Peru, a quiet genius of portrait photography, 1896-1929. The second half of the 20th century meant for Arequipa a time of cultural development through the modern practice of photography. Photographers from different places and nationalities, such as Gismondi, Renault, Vargas, the Giancini brothers, among others, led a progressive movement of photographic practice, contributing to its assimilation in society as an artistic medium and means of documentary record. In this context, the artistic center of Arequipa and the astronomical observatory Carmen Alto, installed by Harvard University, contributed to modern photography by opening spaces for innovation, exhibition, and investigation of modern photographic techniques. Emilio Diaz was part of this cultural boom. He was born in 1870 in Arequipa and became both a photographer and a painter. Fortunately, his talent was noted throughout his career for the quality and beauty of his portraits, for which he received many awards and distinctions. He became part of the art scene at the age of 23, winning a silver medal for his photographic portraits in the exhibition organized by the Artistic Center of Arequipa in 1893. Seven years later, Diaz received important international recognition when he was awarded a copper medal at the Universal Exhibition of Paris of 1900 for his portrait work. Undoubtedly, his work constitutes a treasure, not only for modern photography, but also for Peruvian culture. Today, the owner of the collection, Mr. Jorge Biacorta Chavez, art critic and independent curator with special interest in contemporary visual art, will kindly present us the exhibition exploring the artistic and social cultural context that influenced Emilio Diaz's work at the end of the 19th, 19th century. At the same time, a set of images will be presented to show us the artistic excellence, to show us the artistic excellent, excellence of an individual considered a true genius of portrait photography. Our special gratitude to him for his generosity and also to Mr. Miguel Cordero, who made this exhibition possible. So now I am pleased to give the floor to Jorge Villacorta Chavez to start the talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ambassador of Peru. Um, I am going to present what could be described as a guided tour uh, of an imaginary exhibition. Uh, and I, but I would like, first of all, to begin by um, establishing the context of historical photography in Peru. And I'm, I very briefly will point out that uh, the daguerreotype arrived in Peru in 1842 in Lima, uh, a scene of uh, photographic studios started. And by 1860, uh, we could actually say that a golden age of photographic studios in Lima began. Lima, as capital of Peru, at that point, uh, was the focus of photographic activity. But then, in 1879, the War of the Pacific, uh, a war that involved uh, Peru and Bolivia uh, against Chile, uh, put a stop to all that. And the photographic young talent in Lima had to wait for a long time. The city was occupied for three years from 1881 to 1884. And as such, it wasn't an auspicious situation for photography to develop. But in the south of Peru, a very different situation ar arose because Arequipa, a city uh, between the ocean and the Andes, almost an island in itself, was out of the way of the Chilean army as it marched its way to Lima. And in Arequipa, there was virtually no uh, 
pillage, no plunder, uh, no destruction. And in fact, it, it was a very peaceful occupation by the Chilean army. And in that environment, everything went on almost as usual. So Arequipa, by virtue of that situation, was able to rise in photographic activity and became what could be called uh, a second center for photography in Peru in the late 19th century. And that is the time when uh, Emilio Diaz was uh, trained as photographer, although we do not know exactly how. And that was also the time during which he rose to fame because of his portraiture. But uh, I will briefly go through that and um, you will be able to see how he mastered the art of portraiture and at the same time, the diversity of his work. So I would like to begin by presenting his portrait. Um, this is particularly important because mm, it must be remembered that at that time in Peru, uh, a photographer was basically an operator, a, a technical operator of the new technique. Uh, uh, and and it, um, let's wait till the portrait of Emilio Diaz appears, please. Nobody's. Excuse me for a bit. No parece. No te están dejando compartir. Could could you allow me to share the screen, please? I I am finding difficulty with that. Please. Ellos sí están viendo. Excuse me, could you just tell me if you are seeing Emilio Diaz's portrait um, in the screen, on the screen? Um, please. Sí, parece, parece que tiene que darle al zoom abajo, pero ya tienen eh, la potestad de, de compartir la pantalla. Sí. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. So this is Emilio Diaz as a young man, probably uh, around his late twenties. And it, it is very important to point out one thing. Uh, as I was saying a minute ago, a photographer was a mechanical operator really. It, uh, it was not um, normally considered to be a profession in the sense of the liberal, liberal professions. Uh, he was rather seen as, a, uh, as somebody who knew his trade and was able to produce beauty, but not necessarily was considered to be an artist. But Emilio Diaz was one of a generation of photographers in Arequipa who actually claimed for himself the role of an artist in his society. Uh, in this particular image, you can see that he has uh, kind of taken up a very handsome um, attire and he is he has certainly retouched his features and he has certainly he has certainly whitened himself because uh, he was probably what you could describe uh, uh, an Arequipeño mestizo uh, mixed blood um, local and Spanish blood and to present himself in society he had to actually um, acquired a different appearance. Uh, it's important to point this out because uh, the beauty of the portraits in Arequipa involved in many ways retouching. It was part of the art. Uh, so Diaz was one of the first photographers who claimed to be an artist. And uh, his history, his personal history is interesting because he was an orphan by by the age of 12, he was an orphan and he was educated by uh, a French priest, Hippolyte Duhamel, 
who actually set up a school in Arequipa where uh, he uh, taught he taught the the um, uh, the sons of rich families, and by that uh, by that action, he was able to derive the money to include in his school the orphans, and he was able to provide a very particular mix of uh, children who were uh, orphaned at a very early age with. Uh, rich children and the links between the poor and the rich were very um, innovatively um, presented in such a way that later in life the context existed. This is something that was quite unusual and it didn't always work. Uh, there was a point at which Duhamel's project didn't um, proceed. So, but at the same time, it was what happened when uh, Diaz was a child. Diaz, uh, by the age of 22, was married uh, to uh, the, the niece of the dean of the cathedral of Arequipa. And as such, probably it could be said that he had uh, risen to another level in society and he had a daughter with her. Um, this is his wife. And this is his daughter. Uh, in, in this photograph, you can see that he used very uh, delicate colored tints to um, bring, the, bring the, the photograph to a state of um, in between uh, painting and photography. He was a very delicate um, colorist. And in this particular photograph, I think, this portrait of his daughter, you can see it very clearly. Uh, by the time that he had, um, by the time he became um, a well-established photographer, he had already won the a copper medal at the 1900 uh, World Exhibition, Universal Exhibition in Paris. Uh, this was a big event. He actually didn't present his work personally. It was sent to the exhibition by a friend of uh, the family, uh, Dr. Juan Moscoso Melgar. And uh, Diaz didn't know that his work was being presented at the Universal Exhibition until he got the medal. Uh, this is a very important aspect of his personality. He was a retiring, um, withdrawn, uh, shy individual who had then at the age of 30 to completely redesign his presentation in society because by, well, by token of the medal, he had become a very public figure. When the news spread in Arequipa, his fame as a photographer was, was really visible and it was at this point that he had to make improvements in his studio. And it was at this point that his uh, art of portraiture really became what was essentially one of the most admired uh, works of art in photography in the city of Arequipa and later recognized as such in the history of Peruvian photography. This is the mayor of Arequipa, Octavio Muñoz Najar. This is a portrait by Diaz. And the reason why I chose this picture is that uh, he, as a mayor, asked Emilio Diaz to do uh, the official picture of the Plaza de Armas de Arequipa uh, when it was redesigned. So this is what Arequipa looked like in 1908. And Essentially, he got this work, he got, sorry, he got, he got this job because of the prize that he won in Paris in 1900. Um, it must be remembered that Arequipa was a small city. Um, it was large for a city in the south of Peru, about 25,000 inhabitants, but it was a small city and it was 
certainly one of the most beautiful of the cities to the south of Peru. Uh, it is a city made out of volcanic rock, uh, like a pumice stone type uh, rock. And uh, the, the, the place was um, essentially a center for modernity in the Southern Andes or in the Southern Andean area. Uh, I, I just want to point out one thing before uh, we go on, and it is in Arequipa that the photography movement of the Southern Andes started, really. Uh, it was in Arequipa that world famous photographer Martin Chambi came to train as a photographer in around the year 1908, precisely when this photograph was taken. So Arequipa was a center for photographic art. It had as an institution, the Center for the Arts, the Centro Artistico, and it was at this institution that um, annual exhibitions were held, uh, prices were given and photography uh, in, uh, in, during a period in, in which, um, Elsewhere in Peru, say Lima or uh, other possible cities, um, there was no um, view of it as an art. In Arequipa, it was shown at the annual exhibitions on a foot with painting and sculpture and drawing and engraving. So in Arequipa, you have this very particular situation in which a city, a society recognizes photography as an art. And by 1908, when this um, commission was accomplished by Emilio Diaz, he had risen to the highest point in his um, reputation. This is an, an image of the period uh, right at the beginning of the 1900s, after the um, after the prize had been the, the medal had been given to him in Paris, uh, it's a society lady. It's a portrait of a society lady, uh, a very young woman, and the softness of the touch uh, in the um, very very um, I would say almost evanescent quality of the portrait is very evident, but uh, as a portrait, portraitist of society, uh, Diaz also produced things like the images we're going to see now. This is um, a very prominent young man from one of the wealthiest families in Arequipa. This is an alternate picture. His name is Andres Montesinos. Uh, the Montesinos family at that time was a very well respected family in Arequipa, and you can see that Montesinos is a dandy. Uh, it, it, it was it might have been a very small city, but the the idea of the dandy modern sensibility uh, surrounding the aesthetic uh, importance of the appearance of the man about town is certainly very, very notorious here. Can, can we? This image is also a, a, a very, very inspired portrait of a young woman. Uh, evidently here, uh, her hair is essentially the feature of beauty. The profile is a very suitable angle uh, because of the importance given to the back and the hair. Um, it, it is very important to notice that uh, Diaz uses um, a device that was essentially important for uh, French photographers of the mid 19th century, and that is the plain um, background. Uh, he, he doesn't, at this point in his career, he doesn't actually um, elaborate on the background. The background is the perfect foil for um, the presence in the foreground. Can you 
please. This is a, a, a portrait of the sister of Andres Montesinos, the dandy we saw uh, previously. It belongs to her a period in, early on in her marriage. Uh, so she could be described as a young uh, matron in Arequipa. Uh, she evidently is uh, a well-composed young woman. Uh, as I said before, the Montesinos family was a very uh, renowned family in Arequipa at that time we're talking uh, first decade of the 20th century so uh, this woman was one of the um, clients that favored Odia's studio uh, it is also important to note uh, that um, Diaz also portrayed a fancy ideas among um, his clientele. So this is probably an, an unidentified uh, woman from the upper class in Arequipa who has chosen to dress herself as a cholita uh, from La Paz in Bolivia. It must be remembered that, that at that time, the uh, territory of um, the south of Peru is very, very close with, in links with the uh, Bolivian cities, especially La Paz's capital. So the attire of a, of, a, of a woman from La Paz is um, a, a very attractive costume for young ladies who want to disguise themselves. Uh, other situations surrounding uh, the importance of fashion can be very clearly seen in his work. Uh, this one, this particular image is very important to me because it shows the attitude that Diaz had to photography. Um, as, as you can see, the effect is to, to create a complete illusion. I mean, the, the young woman is uh, standing before a backdrop and this backdrop is painted probably uh, this is a, a backdrop that was bought by catalog. But the, the interesting thing is how Diaz has created a whole environment, almost as if he was painting the setting for the woman to stand in. And that is a very uh, notable feature of his practice of photography. And it certainly, I think, has to do with the fact that he was a painter. Uh, Dr. Andres Garay, with whom I have done research on Diaz, always as, expresses that Diaz composed within the frame. That is, he was always looking for a complete composition within the frame. And this is a particularity because although eventually the portrait would only center on the face or up to the arms, uh, the elbow, the, the arms of the lady, uh, in order to do the composition, he would think it out to the full. We're going to see now in succession, this is the envelope of a uh, portrait. The portrait that you're seeing now came into the, in that particular envelope. That was part of the marketing technique of a photographer like Diaz in Arequipa around 1910. Uh, there are some family portraits that are very poignant, um, this one in particular, but there's another one too. Um, obviously these are, were always upper class clients. The religious orders was were also uh, the clients of Diaz, and this is a very interesting portrait of a young cleric. Um, he certainly looks uh, extremely serious and ex extremely intense. And this is part two of the attitude to portraiture. As you can see, the, the, the being plain uh, without element, the ground actually allows the portrait for the, the, the person portrayed to stand out fully. Uh, this is a, a portrait of around 1920s once again. Uh, 1920, you can see how uh, the intention of Diaz is to create an environment, a complete environment. He is very meticulous. It's not only placing the backdrop and 
getting the young man to stand before it, but it's it's almost as if as if you had to create um, a whole atmosphere, uh, a very um, balanced effect, and this has to do with his style as a painter, certainly. He was also very fond of portraying children, and sometimes the, the images he did of children had very uh, tender overtones. Um, and I wanted to say that uh, this in his, this insight into uh, a child's conscience produced images that are very endearing to this day. Uh, this one in particular is of children wearing uh, more children in mourning, and at the same time uh, there is an effect in the children's expressions that communicates an innocence and um, a way of um, overcoming the impositions of a very strict society at the time. Likewise, this child at the um, at the mirror. The, the, and this is something that I wanted to point out. Um, the, the, the use of mirrors um, also was very common in European photography of the 19th, 19th and 20th century. But in this case, um, there seems to be also an element of playfulness and almost a, a storytelling device uh, as to the child uh, dreaming with what she will be when she becomes a young woman. Uh, Diaz did commissions for the Chavez de la Rosa Orphanage, which was an institution created in the uh, mid 1920s. And uh, th these, this, these are a series of postcards uh, that come in a booklet, the, the cover of which you saw a minute ago. Uh, this is the dining room for girls. Uh, this is uh, one of the dormitories. Uh, this is the football team of the orphanage. And here you can see uh, the girls in one of the workshops. Uh, this is obviously a work done by commission. By the late 1920s, um, Emilio Diaz wasn't producing innovative portraits, but was certainly called upon to do commissions such as these. But there are also two very interesting pictures, which I am going to show, which uh, certainly point to some kind of idea of street photography. This is a first communion group, a, a, a group of girls uh, about to do their first communion. And this is obviously done in the street. Uh, he has taken his camera with tripod outside of the studio. And although this must have been at the time a marginal theme, the circus in this particular image is very striking. So one can say that although he may have lost the innovative edge in his portraiture by the end of his life, he was interested in other topics such as this. Uh, it is at this time in his life that uh, he was jury on one of the Centro de la Central de, Centro Artístico de Arequipa, the, the Center for the Arts of Arequipa, in the area of photography, and he gave the prize to a young Martin Chambi. Martin Chambi didn't apprentice with Diaz, he apprenticed with Diaz's rival, Max de Vargas. Uh, Max de Vargas is the other great giant of photography in Peru. But just to summarize, I would like to say that um, Diaz and Vargas and others in Arequipa represent a time when the focus of photography shifts from Lima, the capital of Peru, to the south. And by shifting to the south, they eventually will have an influence in what happens in Cusco. Uh, you may have heard, obviously, of the uh, Cusco School of Photography. Well, 
the Cusco School of Photography was possible only because of the intensity brought to it by Martin Chambi. And I, as I was telling you, Martin Chambi trained as a photographer in Arequipa. It is important to note too that by 1931, uh, at the time of his death, uh, the, the, the whole notion of the photographic studio had very gradually started to uh, wane. It, it's almost as if a period of decadence very gradually set in from the 1930s onwards and by the 1950s, all the great photographic studios in the south of Peru had almost completely disappeared. So this is what I wanted to tell you of Emilio Diaz. And as, as I said before, it is an opening into the history of Peru, which is a fascinating subject as everywhere in South America. It must be remembered that South America was one of the places where it is now acknowledged photography was invented. In Brazil, one of the um, acknowledged inventors of photography, Hercule Florence, uh, a Frenchman, but um, a resident of Brazil actually developed a technique of his own. So uh, if one can put it this way, South America is one of the places in the world where the invention also originated. And at the same time, there are many, many fascinating aspects of the history of photography in the 20th and uh, century, especially in different countries of South, South America, which we are now beginning to uh, get a glimpse of. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Villacorta. It's really been a fascinating talk. Uh, I have a few questions, if you don't mind, as I think we have time. Um, yes. Um, I, I, was in, I would be interested in knowing what happened. I, you, he died very young, so um, I, I, perhaps you could um, tell us how, what, what happened to him. And then, as you mentioned, he had a, a daughter. Um, what happened to his, his, uh, his work? I mean, I, I understand that you, uh, you, you are the owner of, of, of much of his work, but what happened to it from his death? Uh, is it in an, was it in an archive? Uh, perhaps you could give us some details on that. Yes, in fact, uh, I, I must point out, uh, I am the owner with Dr. Andres Garay of positives, of copies of uh, glass negatives. But uh, the, the big rescue of his archive, which was uh, almost completely destroyed by the rains in Arequipa in uh, 2012, uh, the big rescue of what remained of the archive was um, carried out by Miguel Cordero. So uh, in the exhibition, I have presented uh, copies of negatives, uh, especially vintage copies, but uh, I have also presented modern positive, modern copies of uh, glass negatives. And Miguel Cordero is uh, the owner of an archive of, of around 500 uh, glass plate negatives. And these glass plate negatives are uh, the main source we have for the study of Emilio Diaz's history as a photographer. Um, it may not seem a big number of uh, glass plate negatives, but what it, it is about 10% of the archive as a whole that had been uh, preserved and that was destroyed almost completely, as I said, in 2012 by the rains. But uh, in, it was through contact with Miguel Cordero that I was able to um, have a complete vision of um, the 
the, the, the rise, the development and the decadence of his work. Um, the, the thing in Arequipa is that um, you had to be very innovative to keep up with society's wishes uh, for self-image. So uh, if you can imagine an elite that was always, always um, pursuing uh, a very attractive um, transformation of themselves in photography, um, Diaz stopped providing that particular um, um, embellishment of clients in the new era at around um, 19, 15, 19, 16. Uh, it was then that um, the new photographers in Arequipa, especially the Vargas brothers, became very famous because they consorted with a group their age. They were dandies uh, of their own, in their, sorry, they were dandies in their own right. And they were also artists that had inherited that claim uh, to, artist, to artistic mastery that Emilio Diaz had, um, had initiated. Uh, the whole thing is that as the Diaz, the, 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 the Diaz problem was that he was not particularly um, prone to uh, socialize with the higher classes, whereas the Vargas brothers were uh, young, younger than him and were of the same set as the uh, young, rich uh, children of the great families of Arequipa. So in a way, in Arequipa, in the 1920s, you also had uh, a completely different attitude to life, more like gaiety and um, um, fun and games was basically the whole uh, attitude. And Diaz, who had always had who had always had difficulties with in dealing with clients um, because of his own retiring nature, uh, simply just fell off into the background gradually. So by the time he died, he had um, he had lost most of most of his clients. Uh, and in fact, although he didn't die in poverty, he uh, he wasn't that well off in spite of all the great work he had done. And um, the family was not, um, being an only child, the daughter couldn't actually, um, you know, take, take it upon herself to protect his, her father's legacy, especially because at the time she got married, and this is before uh, Emilio Diaz died, she got married in 1929. Uh, the role of women in Peruvian society was not prominent at all. I, it must be remembered that uh, the, uh, but women got the vote in Peru in 1956. So she actually followed her husband to Lima and the archive of Diaz remained in Arequipa. It was bought by somebody else and it was preserved, well preserved until 2012, it was just an unfortunate situation that um, caused its destruction almost completely. Very interesting, thank you. Thank you for filling in some of the details that I was curious about. So, um, Mr. Villacorta, I want to show you my appreciation, the embassy's appreciation for, for participating in this effort we have of um, promoting Peruvian culture in the United Kingdom, especially this year of our bicentennial. And um, I, I would like to convey uh, our gratitude both to you and, and your colleagues that have been participating in, in, in this effort to, to promote Emilio Diaz's work, which is uh, unfortunately um, he, he has been in the limelight. Uh, he hasn't been in the lim limelight um, at all when, when you compare his name to, to names of other photographers, proven photographers that you've mentioned like Chambi and, and Vargas. 
Um, but uh, th 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 it's wonderful that uh, you are um, dedicated to, to his work and um, hopefully at some point in the future, uh, we might have uh, a, a, an exhibition here in, in, in the United Kingdom with actual uh, physical photographs. Um, it's too, too soon to, to be able to, to promise anything, but I think we, we could work towards that, that uh, objective if, if you agree. Of course, that would be great. That would be really great. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. No, thank you. And uh, to, to our viewers, uh, to thank their presence, uh, the, watching us, and just to remind everybody that uh, this, this um, talk will be um, downloaded in the YouTube channel the Embassy has, along with other um, content that is permanently being uh, downloaded not only content made by the embassy, also content that we are receiving from our ministry in Peru, um, which is um, of course um, giving us much material regarding the bicentennial celebrations of this year. So once again, Mr. Villacorta, thank you very much. And everybody else who's listening, thank you for, for being with us. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, thanks. Bye -bye. Thanks a lot. Wow.